keeping in mind the importance of our probability statements, distinguishing between strict inequalities and less than or equal to, greater than or equal to statements, let's look at calculating some probabilities using StatCrunch. So whenever we calculate binomial probabilities, assuming we've already verified the conditions that this approach can apply, we need to identify the number of trials, which again is usually represented as n, and the probability of success. Which is usually represented with a lowercase p. So first we'll go through each of these examples. We'll set up the probability statements, identify those two values, and then look at plugging that information into StatCrunch. In our first example, or example two, consider a trial in Texas in which jurors will be selected from a population that's 80% Mexican-American. We want to find the probability that among 12 randomly selected jurors, there are exactly seven Mexican-Americans. Now the first thing to point out with this question is that these are technically not independent selections. Because as soon as you're picked for jury duty, you can't be picked again. So technically, the population of Texas changes by one person every time we select a juror. However, if we're looking to choose from all of the people in Texas, we know we have a very large population that we're choosing from, meaning, meaning the odds of a person being selected twice, if that was a possibility, so if your name was put back in the hat and you could be selected again, the odds of being chosen are incredibly small. So for a large population, even though these are dependent events, we can treat them as independent. So we technically have one condition that we don't meet, but using this idea of large populations lets us get around that idea. So in this case, we're selecting 12 jurors, meaning there will be 12 trials, or 12 times we'll select an individual out of the population. And we're interested in the probability of selecting exactly seven Mexican-American jurors. The population is 80% Mexican-American, so the probability of success is going to be 0 0.8 and we want to find the probability that x is exactly equal to 7. So that's the setup for our problem. Again, we'll move on to these others and then come back and look at StatCrunch and how we'll, count, how we'll come up with these calculations. In example 3, test for psychic abilities, researchers have asked the sender to draw 10 cards at random from a large deck, each with one of five unique shapes. Assuming the cards are replaced in the deck, so in this case, the trials are independent. Each time we pull a card, we put it back in the deck. The receiver guesses which card the sender has drawn. So here we have 10 trials. And the probability of guessing would be 1 fifth or 0 0.2. In part A, what's the probability of guessing exactly five correct answers, assuming the receiver has no psychic ability? So we want to calculate the probability that our number of correct guesses would be exactly 5 out of 10. In part B, what's the probability the receiver will get more than 5 of the cards correct? So now here's a point where we have to be careful with that language and our inequality symbol. So we want more than 5 cards. So we want to calculate the probability that x is strictly greater than 5. A similar statement that we'll also take a look at calculating would be if instead of more than 5, the statement said at least 5. So at least 5 would be the same as 5 or more, which would mean the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5. And in our last example, what's the probability of getting 2 to 5 correct? So this would mean we want anywhere from 2 to five correct guesses. So we have that compound inequality statement. In our fourth example, we're told the three-year recidivism rate of parolees in Texas is 30%, meaning 30% of released prisoners return to jail, or, or return to prison. Suppose a prison in Texas released 15 prisoners, 
and that the released prisoners don't interact with each other. So that's how we're getting around this idea of independent trials. So a little bit of an assumption built into the problem there. Find the probability that more than six of these prisoners will end up back in prison. So in this case, we have 15 prisoners who were released. And we know that the, the recidivism rate is 30%. So our probability of success is 0.3. In this case, the success being considered that the person does return to prison. We want to calculate the probability that more than six, so x is greater than six. Or again, a similar statement, if it's said that at least six, then we'd want to calculate the probability that x is greater than or equal to six. So at least six, meaning six or more. So we have our probability statements established. Let's go back to example two and now look at how we'll calculate these probabilities in StatCrunch. So the probability that x is equal to seven with our value of n set to 12 and probability of success equal to 0 0.8. So in StatCrunch, we'll select the stat menu and under calculator, select binomial. So in our first example, n is 12 p is 0 0.8, and we want x to be exactly equal to 7. So we see we have a probability of just over 5%, or 0 0.0532. So as long as we know that value for n, our number of successes, p, and we have our inequality statement, or in this case, equality statement, so let's just say our probability statement, we can calculate that resulting probability. So in example two, our result would be just a little over 5%. In example three, part A, now we have 10 trials and a probability of success of 20%. We want to find the probability that X is exactly five. Turns out to be just a little over 2%. Changing that for part B, to x to be greater than 5, so at first strictly greater than 5, that probability drops to 0 0.0064. And we also want to look at the difference between this calculation and then looking at a greater than or equal to statement. So with a greater than statement, we get a probability of 0 0.0064. When we change that to greater than or equal to, that jumps up to a little over 3%, so 0 0.03. And the difference there being whether or not this value of 5 is included. So again, make sure we're paying close attention to those probability statements. Should it be a strictly greater than, greater than or equal to, which probability statement matches the problem? Then for part C of that question, now we have a compound inequality, so we'll switch to the between option. We still have the same values for n and p, but we want x to be between 2 and 5 meaning that 2, 3, 4, or 5 would be considered a success. And we get a probability of a little over 62%, or 0.6178. Or not over 62%, of about 62%. In example 4, our number of, six, number of trials is 15. Our probability of success is 0.3. And we want to switch back to standard to calculate the probability that x is greater than 6. So if these 15 prisoners are released, the probability that more than 6 of them will return to prison is a little over 13%. And if, again, instead we looked at a greater than or equal to statement, that probability would jump from 13% to a little over 27 or almost 28%. So again, a jump from 13 to 28% is a pretty big jump in the probability. So we get, an, excuse me, again, need to make sure we're paying careful attention to what those probability statements are.